In this video, we will be discussing how to choose great community leaders today so that we can have a great future. We will be discussing how to pick our leaders, how to identify good and bad leaders, how society affects our leaders, how our leaders have let us down, and many other things. Ever since I was a little boy, I always noticed that leaders would come into our community, get us all hopeful, and ultimately never deliver. I'm sure that we all know this scenario right here oh so well. First, there's a tragic event in the community. The victims are ID and isolated. The community leader comes in, consoles, and comforts the victim. The community leader gets the community all riled up and emotional, and they want action. The leader shines during this high state of emotion. Then it always seems like the victim gets something, and the community leader gets something, and the rest of us get absolutely nothing. And it seems like it's gotten worse as I've gotten older. What does a true leader do for his people or constituents? Even a better question is, what type of leader can truly uplift the community? But before we do that, let's talk about the type of leader that has utterly taken advantage of our communities. Because of church and its history of being uplifting, we gravitate towards leaders of high charisma. The church is a pruning ground for leaders of high charisma. They learn to move people emotionally, shake them up, and then they move out. You see, charisma is people-based. Even better, charisma is people charm. You can manipulate, persuade, and influence people and just make them do what you want them to do. With charisma, you just can't be a one-trick pony. You have to always be pulling rabbits out of the hat to keep your people following you. Most of the charismatic leaders of my lifetime have always fallen short on helping the masses, but they have really excelled in helping themselves. In short, a lot of our community leaders today have high charisma, but low character. Okay, now let's talk about character. You see, character is not people-based. It's about the individual and what he stands for. And what he normally stands for is what's right. He is not motivated by people or cares what they think. He is driven by his convictions and principles. If the charismatic man needs people as his source of motivation, well, who motivates the noble man of character? His source of motivation is his God, the universe, or whatever was the source of his principles and convictions. I'm sure that seeing success in his family and loved ones is a source of innate motivation. Mainly, a person of character does the right thing, even when no one is looking. When you are a person of high charisma and low character, you are a master at managing your image. That's an addiction that makes you an imaginary person. So no one really knows you. And when they do find out who you really are, it's normally at a great loss. We have been duped so many times by high charisma, low character type leaders. Let's break them down and analyze them so that we can pick better leaders for the future. Where do these leaders come from that have no regard for the feelings or well-being of the people that they serve. While growing up, where did they learn the true value of the people that they will eventually serve? Is this behavior innate? Is it learned behavior? Do we raise sociopaths? Yes, we do. And let me tell you how. I'm going to give you one example of this, and you can take it from there and run with it. Let's say your parents own a small business in your community. That makes them de facto leaders in the community. And while growing up in the business, you learn how to interact with people and how to handle people. And when your parents come home at night, you learn the true value of those people. 
But when your parents come home, they complain about the people, they call them names. You know what I'm talking about. So from your parents at home, you learn the value and the true expectations of the people that you will one day serve. And that same sentiment is all throughout the community and throughout all the homes. So the first place he learns to be a leader of high charisma and low character is at home. We alluded to it earlier. Another place that he learns his leadership style is at church. The church puts out a lot of leaders of high charisma and low character. They'll make you jump, shout, and cry as you do what they say. Another way that they become leaders in our community is if they have money. We have a money-driven community. If you have money, we'll put you right up front because hopefully you can tell us how you got it. Your bank account is your qualification. So money basically makes them a de facto leader. Here are some questions to help identify these leaders of high charisma and low character. Have they ever delivered on a long-term promise? So often, these high charisma, low character type leaders have hurt our posterity or future generations with their decisions for short-term monetary gain. Has this leader served consistently or opportunistically? Have they been tried and tested through different scenarios to help the community? Do they just show up for racial tragedies, but they never show up for the more callous and violent black-on-black -black crimes? If they are put into leadership roles because they have money, you have to look at how did they obtain their money. Is their money hard-earned, honest money? Or is it blood money? And then you have to look at this person's qualifications, and that's far beyond money. Because we are the only community that rappers, entertainers, singers, and comedians get to go talk to the president and represent us. Society seems to elevate the people of high charisma and low character, while society seems to turn off the people of high character. We need to figure out how to get our high character people to come out and become leaders. Have you ever wondered what style of leader would be the best type of leader for our community? The ultimate leader of our community would be a leader of high character and high charisma. That's already rich. You know, money has always been the Achilles heel of our leaders. Their hands always get caught in the cookie jar. This ultimate leader of high character and high charisma will be educated and able to make long and short-term decisions. He knows and understands that the future of our kids is first and foremost. He can move the people, he can work well with others, and he has a true background of service in the community. Think about MLK, JFK, and RFK. 